the relevance of LDL and immunity is, is in fact very relevant at the moment. Um, and I don't know how, how explicit we can be here. Yeah. But the, the, some of the best data from, from China shows that people with the highest susceptibility to COVID-19 infections are those with the lowest cholesterol levels, LDL yeah. levels. Yeah. And th those with the highest LDL are the least likely to have COVID-19 problems. So this is, and now, now they can put it in, in perspective a little bit, understanding that LDL is so related to immunity. Even in the midst of this global concern, LDL could be a hero. Part of the problem with the data on LDL and it being such a terrible predictor of heart disease, some studies suggesting that it's totally irrelevant, some studies suggesting that it might be relevant, it could be that just looking at LDL number completely misses this deeper level of understanding, which is the, the pattern so-called of LDL. So we, LDL can manifest in, in varying um, widths or, or, or diameters size, in other words, volume. And a, a larger, more buoyant LDL, commonly called pattern A, that is much less associated with um, formation of atherosclerotic plaques and heart disease. In contrast, a small, dense LDL is a pattern B that's much more associated with atherosclerosis and heart disease. Now, what's interesting is that as much as we look at LDL as being manipulated through dietary fat, that isn't going to be the main variable that changes the pattern of the LDL. And this has been done. Volick and Finney, some of the legendary low-carb scientists, they found that they could take people who were LDL pattern B, the, the, the apparently more atherogenic form of LDL, mm -hmm. and push them towards pattern A by by cutting the carbs and focusing more on fat. It, it, made, it made the LDL more buoyant and less, uh, we suppose, more, less atherogenic. If someone's looking at their LDL number from a conventional blood panel after a doctor's visit, they won't know what type of LDL they have. It, it's very rarely measured, but you can do it. If someone wants to get an idea of their LDL pattern, then they can look at two other lipid markers that have value beyond the LDL pattern. They can also even indicate insulin resistance, and that is the triglycerides and the HDL cholesterol. <clears throat> if someone, anyone listening, go look at your blood panel, and if it's in, in the units would have to be milligrams per deciliter to do this, but it's, if, you're, if your triglycerides divided by your HDL cholesterol is lower than about 1.5, that's a good sign. Mm -hmm. That means two things, that you're likely more of an LDL pattern A and that you're likely insulin sensitive. In contrast, if your triglyceride number divided by your HDL number is higher than around 1.5, that's a bad sign. You're likely more pattern B, LDL, and you're likely insulin resistant. Yeah, it's a good analysis. So basically, if your HDL, you know, typically you're looking at that over 50, you want that to be over 50. Um, and let's say your, your triglycerides were 75, your HDL was 60, that would be a good ratio because that's mm -hmm. less than 1.5, as opposed to if your triglycerides were 150 and your HDL was 60. Now that's, you know, like a 2.5 yep. ratio, triglyceride HDL ratio, it's a sign of insulin resistance there. DoctorsToTrust.com, world's number one site for short, annotated nutrition videos designed to share with loved ones.